What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode out here at Cultus Lake, getting some twilight practice in. It's been a while since I've actually played here and uh, I miss some of that winter off season grind that I had here. So, you know, just coming back just to get some of that, some of that energy back. Anyway, today what I want to talk to you guys about was things I discovered in my swing that I realized why my swing wasn't holding up in tournament play. And so I've taken some steps to address them and I'm uh, gonna play a little course vlog here after to kind of show you how I'm implementing them and to kind of see if they're working. So my swing has gone through quite the evolution over the last seven months and it's getting to a really good spot. I can finally use my lower body, my impact position's getting there, but two things it's really exposed are one, my club face control and my grip. As I started to get better at turning, as I started to use my lower body, another thing that was still plaguing me all the time is I hit a really high ball and sometimes I struggle to control it. And like right now I got the wind blowing right into me, right? And so one thing I was doing on my takeaway was I was just taking the ball back inside and then coming and then kind of coming through this way. And I was delivering the face kind of wide open at impact or I was using my hands and timing to correct the face at impact. And where this was causing me issues in tournaments is obviously in a casual round when I'm just chilling and I'm loose, you know, sure, I can hit all the crazy shots I want and time it up as needed. But under the gun, that was really starting to cause me problems. So I knew I had to fix this. So to fix this problem, I went and saw my coach, Max. Now, Max and I have been working together since January. He's been instrumental in helping accelerate my learning curve. He obviously is aware that I'm doing the Gankus program and understands that method because he actually worked with George himself. And he's one of the most consistent golfers I've ever played with or watched. Incredible golfer, incredible coach. He even won uh, the tournament I played in a couple weeks ago. And it was like a second tournament back in like two years. He took a little break and just came back absolutely just dominating. Dude's a beast. And a big reason why I, I, I very much pay attention to what he says and watch how he plays is because of his consistency and his impact position and these finer details that you're gonna see in our lesson. These are the things that he does his best when we've played golf together. So I've clipped together about 10 minutes of footage from my lesson and then I'm gonna show you after here, I'm gonna take some swings on the course, show you how I'm implementing them. Um, but here's our lesson, the things we're working on. So hope you enjoy. Okay, so after we had that talk. Yeah. And so now I can turn. Yeah. But I know club face control. I'm still definitely delivering it. Stupid. Okay. Like I can get to here and I'm sort of doing this. I know I'm doing, I know I'm pushing back okay. instead of with my irons going through. But at least now at impact, I'm looking more like, like this, like the, like the shot I sent you. Okay. So I know like if I'm gonna kind of hit one here. So that's not bad. Yeah. But I know like I'm also liable to then over lean into it. It's going to go left to where the tire is. Um, and then if I intentionally try and cut it, I do a stupid thing with my hands where I, I do that. Okay. So what I know, I know I can now feel this that we couldn't get to before. Okay. But it's figuring out what to do with my hands and my grip uh -huh. to get that club face square like you and I were talking about. Okay. And what are you doing with your grip right now? So I've been trying three things to see which one okay. can do it. One is I just like, this, like I've been doing the baseball grip because that's been with my wedges. It's been pretty good. Okay. So, but then, and then I can hit a pretty consistent drop. Like in the tournament, I went full baseball grip, and I knew and, where the ball was going. You like drawing it, like that's a wrong, no wrong answer. Just curious. I just need to know. I, I like drawing it. I don't actually care which way. I just want to know every time where it's going. Right? With, with you, with your fade off the tee, like you know where your ball is going. The reason why we're getting to this impact position is yeah. because you know where it's going. So I'm not romantic to either way. I probably see a fade better with my irons, but off the tee. I, I, I draw, I can kind of commit to more because I'm not in the fear of snap hooking and left with a fade. Okay, okay. Which happens a couple times, but again, that's also because of timing and club face control. Yeah, so you yeah. can iron that out. Like, okay. it's, there's a couple games of whack a mole we're playing here, right? Okay, okay. Um, so, 
Okay, so grip, uh, grip. So, so grip, grip, yes, the same. So I know with this, I can, I'm can. i probably doing a little bit of manipulation with the hands at impact to make sure it drops. The other thing I started doing to get, which the video I sent you where you said this is the best swing you've had. Yeah. Um, I did like a more cowl grip. So like here. Okay. So that I could. Strong right hand. So I could remind myself to do, to, grow, to add flexion. Extension. Extension, sorry. Yeah. So I could do that, you know, there. But I know I'm probably still delivering the face. I just want to be able to deliver the face. I'm athletic enough and because of my drummer hands. Yeah. I can yeah. kind of do whatever we need. Sure. So I'm just looking to tighten. <clears throat> uh, well, there is like a matchup thing with grips. Right. Right. So, um, but because you told me like every time I send you a video, you're like face wide open, face wide open, face wide open. Yeah. So I'm trying to just figure out how do we get it. Because right. I want it here, right? Yeah. Correct. So whatever I got to do to get to there, right? I'm down. Uh, I think it also starts from up here too. Right. Right. So like for me personally, yeah. right, with my four knuckle grip. Yeah. If I get Bowie. Yeah. My face is going to be so shut. I would hit it left of left of left, no matter how hard I rotated, got the club in front. It doesn't which it, matter. Which is what happens when I try and do that. Okay, have your neutral grip, right, which is good, then you need to feel a little bowy, mm -hmm. right? A little bit extended in this left wrist. Yeah. Okay. That's just why and I was... that needs to maintain. Right, which is why I was doing the Morikawa thing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the takeaway, right, come back down. Right. These are things you'll start to find yeah. when we can achieve connection mm -hmm. and the shut face at the top. These are things you're going to start to do a little bit mm -hmm. fairly natural, right? Because I know what I'm doing too. Right? I think I got two of my, I don't have the elbows connected properly. Mm -hmm. Now that I can turn, I'm noticing I'm still behind. Okay. Here. Okay. Our number one thing is this arm, mm -hmm. this elbow being as bent as possible at impact. Exactly. This is where we need to get to. Yeah. Right? Where's our journey going to be to get to there? Right. We have to start with from here. Right. So go back down. Right. So this stays under here, and this kind of works here with the shut face. Exactly. Right. And that's what I, because I was taking it way inside all the time. With forearm rotation. Right. Which, and then you're doing a really good job of trying to get the club back to the wall. There's no other, you can't do this starting here. Yeah. It's just impossible. Right? Does that all kind of make sense? No, exactly. Crap. Exactly. Because at least, because it took me three months to get the turn right. From when we last did, right? So now, now that I have the, now that I can get to here, I know I'm still not delivering the arms right to get it consistent. So it's got to be this. Yeah. So go back down. All right. So if I put this here, kind of like use like it's right here in your shoe. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Good. So I want this to be more. Here. Okay. See how your shaft is basically right on top of this line. Got it. Right. Now, this would be a little bit exaggerated with the face, but that's our feel. Right. And look what it did to that wrist. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So I can still have my grip the way it is. Correct. Beautiful. Hands in tighter. Get your shaft right on this red line. Good. Do it again? Nice. Right, so not here. Here. Yeah. All right, this is why Max is a pro and this is why I'm not a pro. All right. <laughs> and the spine angle has yeah. increased, right? That's what we're trying to get to today. We don't want to decrease spine up there. No. All right. Which is where I screw up. Because your butt comes off the wall. Right. Right. Okay. Got it. Good. Keep it. 
Perfect. Like that's absolute perfection right there. Mm -hmm. Very different spot than we're used to seeing from you. 100%. This here. Mm -hmm. Usually, like your club face here, it's kind of there. Usually, it's more like that. <laughs> We need that angle staying, that's fine. If not in increasing down, not mm -hmm. standing back up. That's the best we've seen so far. Whew. Like by far. Yeah, the connection, the elbow's not there. It's pretty close. The spine angle's good. It's really close. We've never, yeah. That's the best we've seen you on the wall. Yeah, your spine is increased. Good job. What does that feel like? It feels great. Doesn't it feel awkward. Well, uh, like more detailed. What does it feel like? Give yourself a feeling that you're like, oh, I feel like. Um, I think like before when I was trying to get this feel, I was always trying to like I thought it had to be loose, right? And I think what I like about this now is to hear. I just know it's once I get to here, I squeeze with the elbows. Okay. Squeeze, and then if I turn right and bring this down and squeeze my ass here, if I bring the elbows together, squeeze, keep the flexion, and I just now all I have to do is turn. So it's like a squeeze and turn on the squeeze and turn. Yeah, I like that squeeze and turn. Yeah. yeah. Good. 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 Keep it. Oh. Ah, that's the one. Good God, is that good? Yeah. Like, I want to hit it like that. <laughs> Go up the top. Good. Come down slow. So your hands. You just say it under here. Under here. It's the illusion that there's not a lot of ball speed because it's so controlled. Right. It just, it doesn't look spectacular. No. But it just, yeah. it does the job. Nice and boring. Exactly. Old man though. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. There you go. I don't know how much better you can hit a golf ball. Like, yeah. Like the tightness of that plate, like the window, like it didn't, that's the one. So great stuff from Max there and just a lot of feels. Like one of the things I was really struggling to get with that we, you saw in the lesson that we were working on was just understanding on the takeaway how to really add flexion to the wrist. You know, Dustin Johnson and Colin Morikawa are two of the greatest iron players in the game. And the reason for that is because they're the best at controlling their club face. Because of that bowed wrist and impact, they just do such a good job of not flipping or doing anything crazy. And that's really what I want to get to because there's some other course management stuff I've been working on that requires you to have that level of consistency in order to really execute right. And I want to implement that system. But in order to do that, I got to nail this first. So I've been really grinding on that. I went to the range this morning and just did like a ton of half swing drills that you saw me doing with Max. Just really trying to understand that feel to get that wrist in there and then to also drop the elbow into the slot, right? Because obviously it's getting it to here, but then understanding how to bring this in and turn and stay low. Another issue I run into is I pop up all the time, even with iron shots, like an idiot, like it's just, I don't know. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to come in and stay low and really drive and turn so I can get that pro impact position. All right, so as we go along here, I'm gonna play some holes. Not really caring about score, just more caring about function. If I screw one up, I will reload and hit it again because I wanna make sure I'm doing this properly. This isn't about score or creating expectation. This is about execution. So 
Here we go. We got 188 yard uh, par three right now into the wind. Let's do it. That's probably the best feeling swing I've had so far since my lesson yesterday. And uh, this green is always tough to hit. This bunker just kind of, whenever you try and hit a cut to this pin, it's, it kind of ends up always way more right. So kind of went right at it. Other thing is with these trees here, you can't really hit a draw. So you're forced to hit that cut and just committing to that swing, hitting it right at the pin, just worked out perfect. All right, we got a par four here. Uh, I just want to hit a nice four iron down here. Just want to control, control a nice four iron down the fairway. That way it leaves us another iron in so we can get some more practice going. Okay. Whew, that was straight. Another interesting aspect that I'm learning throughout this journey and, and just something that I'm taking away is that as I surround myself with better players and focus on becoming actually better at golf and learning what the better players do, it's interesting how the obsession in golf changes to very much on swing mechanics and like impact position and all these like fine tuned things that you see pros really working on. You know, if you want to feel like an idiot, try talking to one of these pros about gear. They do not give. They don't care. They don't care. I've tried to have certain conversations. They do not care. They're not even aware. They just don't care, right? The big thing for them is their swing, their mechanics, their fundamentals, their technique. It's been an interesting learning experience for me because at the end of the day, it's like as I get better and better, I just keep learning these other things that are in my control that I can fix to make myself better. They're not gear dependent or anything like that and yeah I just it, like it, it just it's interesting how it's a total mental shift from where I was and just how much more work and how many more things are in my control to make sure I hit the ball well and then just you know find tools that don't get in your way That was one of the smoothest driver swings I have ever had. And that's the point. That. Everything, it's interesting. Everything goes a little straighter. Because one thing I was noticing, especially in the tournaments, was that I didn't realize how much I was compensating for my hands. So as a result, when I would talk to you guys about aim, well, the variance when you have to time everything is so much greater. How, like, how am I supposed to deal with that? It just, it's just way too many variables. And then under the gun and under pressure, that just becomes a whole compounding mess. And for the days when I'm on, it's great because I can do anything and I can paint the picture as needed. But this is all for the bad days. And my bad days in a tournament are really bad because the timing, having to think about that, just becomes an absolute nightmare to deal with. So I'm really hoping that now once I get these, these core fundamentals right, then... I can start to ramp the speed up and I can take advantage of using my strength, but in a much more controlled fashion. So it's men's night here at the club. There's the, uh, the long drive marker and uh, I beat it by quite a bit, but I'm not part of men's night tonight. And technically I'm in the rough, so this wouldn't have counted. So no money for your boy, but maybe next week. Yeah, a little more. Get your pitch marks, folks. Don't be those people. Hurt. All right, so this is an interesting hole. It's the only par five on the course. Now from the back tees here, it's 240 to that tree right there. 
knowing what I know about my swing, I would then just try and absolutely roast the hybrid and hook it around that corner. However, now we're gonna see if we can hit a nice controlled shot to that corner and not really rely on the hands to flip it. Oh, that is so sick. Oh, that was sick. Well, that couldn't have worked out any more perfect than it did. Now we got ourselves, uh, I think it's 188 to this pin, I'm not sure. I kind of zapped the tree instead because I can't really see the pin. So uh, we're just gonna kind of swing and pray on this one. I think that's real, that could be really good or too long, I don't know. That tee shot was like one of the shots I've seen the pros I play with hit. They never like rope things the way I have to rope things. They're just, it's just, it's almost like watching them is a bit boring because it's just like, it just goes, you know, their ball flight's a lot flatter. It's, it's not as spectacular as you think, but that's what makes it spectacular is actually how lackluster it is in a way because it's just, it just does what it's supposed to do. So I'm actually hoping that by implementing these changes, I become a more boring golfer because that boringness is, is the kind of consistency I really, really want. And if I can, you know, I, that's the best tee shot I've ever hit on this hole through my entire time of being here. Like just that controlled. If I'm in the fairway in the middle like that, it's usually because I've roped something aiming way right and gotten there versus this was just a nice little tactical draw. So, all right, let's see where we are up here. Go in. Too aggressive. Of course. There we go. All right, we got 100 to this pin. I can barely see it, but let's go. That didn't go as far as I needed. Oh, never mind. That was actually pretty solid. Wow, I did not think we got it there. All right, we're gonna skip the ninth hole here because we got the sprinklers going. Uh, so yeah, we don't need that right now. But all in all, you know, these are the changes I'm working on in my swing to try and become as robotic as possible. And hopefully I'm able to do so. You know, this is gonna take a lot of work, but just doing these drills over and over and over, like that's what these guys do who become elite. You know, when I talk to them, like, you know, uh, when I've had conversations with Max about how long it took for him to get his swing to this level, you know, it was just thousands and thousands of swings. So it's just all about being patient with this process, grinding it out every day. I got no problem putting in the work. And at least now I have a much better direction of how to put in that work. And I can kind of fine tune now all the things I've been doing with the Genghis program and really ground it out so that you know, I can execute to where I envision I can be. Because I want to start playing at a much higher level, but it's going to take this work to get there. So anyway, this is what I'm working on. A little snapshot of some of the stuff that's going on and what's happening with the swing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on my journey. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will catch you on the next one.